Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanna to talk to you about six rookie mistakes you might be making. Okay, so before we get into my top six rookie mistakes, I want to start and preface this by saying, like, don't beat yourself up. I've probably made all of these at one point or another. And the whole point of this video is that if you're not making them, then I'm going to draw your attention to them so you won't make these mistakes. And if you are, then realize you're not alone. And here's some tips to help you. Okay, so mistake number one, thinking all T is created equal. Now, if I had filmed this video about five years ago, I would have just told you to avoid tea bag teas where they, they use glue or an adhesive to put the, the tea bag together. Um, I'm thinking of like, like red rose tea, you know, those little round tea bags, right? And they use glue. They use an adhesive to glue the two sides of the tea bag together. And five, 10 years ago, what we would have been worried about would have been polyvinyl chloride, which is a carcinogen and part of the adhesive. So I would have said, try to find a tea bag with a staple in it. Well, fast forward to today, and now we have to worry about all types of other chemicals, including microplastics and all of this kind of stuff that are in the tea bags. And the worst part about this is that the tea bag isn't actually considered to be an ingredient. So the companies don't have to disclose what it's made of or what's in it. Now, what is good about um, tea bag tea is that if a company's doing things right and they're using unbleached this, they'll, they'll advertise it. It'll be all over the box, right? There's no heavy metals, no weird glues, no microplastics, no endocrine disrupting hormones, all that kind of stuff. But not all tea is created equal. Now, the safest way is to just use loose leaf tea. And if you've, you know, you're invested in becoming a tea drinker, then get yourself a really cool little tea plunger or a tea ball and uh, brew your tea that way. Because unfortunately, even the ones with the staples that hold them, like one, we have to ask, is it possible that we're leaching some metals out of that staple because we're putting it in hot water? But number two, that doesn't even cover what the actual tea bag is made out of. So the safest option and the safest swap for you to make is to start using loose leaf tea. Rookie mistake number two, forgetting to get real. What do I mean by that? Sometimes we're sourcing ingredients and we think we know what we're buying and it turns out it's all a lie. <laughs> and everything I'm going to share with you here today can actually be backed up by evidence and tons of media stories because Let's use the honey example, or the honey industry as an example. It came out years ago that there were tons of companies that were watering down or cutting their honey with things like corn syrup, rice sugar, and beet sugar. So you think you're buying honey, and what you're actually buying is beet sugar or corn syrup, which if you're going to buy the honey for medicinal or health purposes, well, that's not what you're getting. This is also very common with vinegars. Not the, I, I think, don't quote me on this because I do know that certain companies have gone through some ownership changes and people are whispering, but what I wanna talk about is this is not the same as this, okay? So this is a raw, unpasteurized, apple cider vinegar that still has the mother in it. These are the words you're looking for. Raw, unpasteurized, has the mother, meaning it still has the culture, starter culture in it. This stuff, this is like the no-name brand, but like Heinz also makes this. There's nothing alive in this. And so if you want to use it for medicine, you're not really getting any health benefits. Now, if you're planning on doing some sweet and sour pickles and you're going to water bath can them, use this because you're going to be boiling it and anything that was raw still in this will be killed. But forgetting to get real, forgetting to buy real honey, forgetting to buy real vinegar that has all those beautiful health benefits that we read so much about. And as a tip, where to get real honey? Farmer's markets. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Rookie mistake number three, I'm calling this one the organic assumption. And I see this a lot. 
there is this misconception that if an industry is natural or works with plants or herbs or makes natural medicines, that it must certainly be organic. And unfortunately, this couldn't be further from the truth. The herbal medicine industry is said to be valued at billions of dollars. That's a whole lot of profit to be lost if they have a pest in their fields or a fungus that attacks their crops. So if you don't think that herbal medicine companies that sell bulk dried herbs, that make medicines, that do all these things, aren't going to use herbicides, pesticides, and fungicides if necessary, they absolutely will to ensure that they're making the profits, especially if they're a publicly owned company, they have shareholders to report to, or a small company too. It's possible, right? And so I think we sometimes have this vision of like people out in fields handpicking chamomile. And unless you are supporting a small herbal supplier that's maybe local to you, that is very clear and transparent about how they do things, you can't assume it's organic. So when you're shopping for bulk dried herbs, teas and herbal medicines, you're going to be looking for words like organic and chemical free on the label, because then we don't have to fall into the organic assumption trap. Rookie mistake number four, forgetting to source local. And I get it for a lot of people. And for me for years, the grocery store was where food came from. <laughs> and that is the case for a lot of us, but sometimes we can get better quality and better prices. And let's go back to rookie mistake number two and actually get real food if we get it directly from farmers. Now for my friends in the city, you guys actually have better farmers markets than we do. It's insane, right? But because I live in a farming community and it's um, not densely populated, most of the farmers drive to city markets to sell their stuff. And so you can go directly to farms, but this is where you're going to meet the beekeeper that is so passionate about honey and local, you know, their local bees. And they'll tell you all about how their operation runs. And that's where you're going to get real honey from. This is where you can source your garlic and your onions and all of those things that we, those beautiful crops that we use to make medicines. And so sometimes we forget to think local and we're actually able to buy, like I said, better quality, oftentimes in bulk. And then you have the, the, the knowledge that you're supporting what is probably a small family farm and helping them in turn to pay their bills, their mortgage, and put food on their table. Rookie mistake number five, not knowing when enough is enough. So you've entered the wonderful world of herbal medicine and you're looking at online suppliers like Mountain Rose Herbs and Harmonic Arts and maybe some of these other great herb suppliers. There's so many of them. And a pound doesn't sound like a lot, right? Like if you were to buy a pound of honey, you'd be like, oh, well, that's not that much. And then you order a pound of catnip and you get this. <laughs> if you're not used to dealing with things like ounces and grams and weights when it comes to buying herbs, it's really, really easy to end up with this instead of this. <laughs> that looks innocuous. It's dill. <laughs> and so it's, um, it's one of those things where it's really easy to suddenly end up with way more herbs than you need because we don't take into consideration that dried herb material is not very dense at all. It's very light and fluffy. A bag of mullein, one pound of mullein is actually a lot bigger than this. And so that can be a, a really discouraging thing too, because you're spending your hard earned dollars. You get this amazing package full of plants. You're excited to start tinkering because you just want to try. And suddenly you've got pounds and pounds of it. That's just going to end up in the compost. So as a reference, okay, so this is a bag of cut and sifted dill weed, and this is a quarter of a pound, which is still a decent amount. So that works out to 113 grams for my Canadian friends. Okay, so it gives you a visual. Another really great tip I have for you is to head to the grocery store this time. And I want you to go down that spice aisle and start picking up the bags and taking mental note of what those measurements look like. So that way, when you do decide to buy your calendula or your elderberries, keep in mind barriers are, berries are heavier than um, dried herb parts, um, or, you know, your mullen because you want to have some mullen tea or peppermint because you want to start drinking peppermint tea. 
you're gonna have some idea of what these actually look like. For something like seeds, so this is a package of caraway seeds, and this is also a quarter of a pound or 113 grams. That's much more manageable, both on your pocketbook and in terms of actually you being able to use it before it goes stale than that. Last but not least, rookie mistake number six. And it's funny because I really wanted to do five because that seemed flashier, <laughs> but I couldn't keep this one off the list. And number six is relying too heavily on technology. I know. And in this day and age, there is an app for everything. And there are times where technology is amazing. And I actually might film um, some videos on this in the future on how technology helps me as an entrepreneur, as a homeschool mom, you know, how do I stay sane? And yeah, there's great times and places for that. But unfortunately, in my experience, plant identification apps are not where it's at. In my world, if you are out and even thinking about foraging or identifying plants in the wild, an app with a 70 to 80% success rate is not good enough. Not when we're dealing with the difference between a plant that is medicine and a plant that might harm you. And I'm not saying this to scare you. What I'm saying is that we become so over-reliant on technology, on apps and um, online resources that sometimes we just forget about good old fashioned books. And I think that this is a big mistake that people make because a lot of the apps are free and this book's going to cost you some money. But I've never misidentified a plant with this book. And I've got a whole video on it. This is the New Combs Wildflower Guide. If you are in North America, this is my absolute favorite guide for identifying wildflowers and wild herbs in the wild <laughs> or even on your property. Um, it looks very different now. This is quite old. Uh, I've been carrying it around for well over 15 years. It's fallen in a couple of rivers. It's had a life. I believe it's blue now. But we can become so dependent on these apps that we end up making syrup from buckthorn berries instead of elderberries. That's no good, friend. That's no good. So rookie mistake number six, you become too reliant on technology and forget about good old fashioned knowledge. All right, friends, did you love this video? I hope you did. <laughs> if you did, leave a comment below. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also, if you liked this content, I have a brand new free ebook that I'm gonna link below, starting with herbalism at home. It has got all of these really great basic tips that it's gonna help you on your journey. If you're new to this and you want some gentle support and some knowledge like the top six rookie mistakes, then I want you to snag that ebook. Like I said, it's completely free. I'll put that link below. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments. And until next time, this is Corrine from Spirea Herbs, wishing you health and wellness. Thank you.